Tonight, a story about your health, and it's going to hit home for so many families. Mm -hmm. I know it's hitting home for a member of our Eyewitness News family. If you haven't been following on social media, Stacy Sager, a super talented, super strong reporter, and those that is not just hyperbole. She is once again battling breast cancer. Now, in between multiple rounds of chemo and countless trips to the doctor, Stacy decided that what she wanted to do with her case was what she does best, tell stories your stories. And tonight she introduces us to a woman from Queens who, much like herself, is trying to enjoy the holidays with family. This as she fights cancer. This is mommy and daddy. Do you want to put this one on? Some holiday traditions never change, but for the Breslin family here in Astoria, this will be a Christmas like no other. Sadly, it won't be an easy one. The hardest part is probably with my daughter, Amelia. Amelia is only two and a half years old. Her mother, Jillian, only 35. Jillian now in treatment for stage four triple negative breast cancer. Her diagnosis without warning. It was May of this year. We had just gotten back from a trip in Disney. I was almost six months pregnant. Her symptoms like hip pain, sciatic pain, and shortness of breath written off as part of the pregnancy till it became too severe to ignore. So we decided to go to the ER and they told me right there in the ER that I was, I had cancer basically throughout my body and my bones, brain, lungs, breasts, and liver. The Breslins now grappling with weekly chemotherapy and Jillian's survival, much less the holiday season. We love our friends dearly, but saying no to those Friendsgivings and friends Hanukkahs and all the friends gatherings. Sticking with immediate family because Jillian's immune system is so compromised. Then we also, you know, send the annoying texts of, hey, can everyone take a COVID test? As many of you know, I too am a cancer survivor in treatment, going through some of the same things. No holiday travel, no big crowds, lots of saying no to others. But experts do have some advice. As a friend or family member that we don't take that personally and that we support that, um, we encourage that and we find other ways to help bring joy. For some, it may mean starting new traditions, and remember, it doesn't mean not checking in. Cancer can be lonely. People stop inviting you to things, and that's tough. What do you say to those people? What do you hope they understand? That I want to hear from them. <laughs> you do, right? Yeah. You just have to let the, the patient feel how they feel. Um, it really is the most important thing. What's clear, material things don't really matter this holiday season, at least not to Jillian and her husband, James. What do you want most for Christmas? Just to be with my two girls, really. For Amelia, too young to understand, it's a team effort right now to normalize the holidays when their world seems anything but. There are days he is a single parent because I can't get out of bed. Um, He's great. That's the hardest part, right? Your daughter knows you're there. And she knows it's going to be a Merry Christmas. As long as there's presents, she'll be happy. <laughs> what a story. Stacy yeah. joins us now. You know, I look at that and I, you're, you're Stacy the reporter, and yet I hear the, the, your yeah. throat cracking a little bit. And I see that she's getting strength from you. That she, you gave that to her in this story. I just want to say I ha I'm crying, but I, I haven't stopped thinking of Jillian since that shoot, or Amelia, or her husband James, mm -hmm. and there may be a Disney surprise coming to their house <laughs> <laughs> for, um, for Christmas, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable the strength that they have and the cohesiveness as a family that they have. And no two cancer stories are alike. Um, I wanted to share another person's story to sort of let people in on the fact that, in case you don't know, it's very lonely having cancer on the holidays because mm -hmm. cancer doesn't take a holiday, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't take a Christmas break and you're still in treatment um, and you really have to take care of yourself and you, can't, and you can't go places that you would normally go. Wow. 
So it's wonderful to be back with you all, though, oh, and so hear you wonderful. in my ear and feel like I'm back home in a way. Well, you are. At Channel you, 7. A you lot's been are. going on. <laughs> a whole so. lot's been going on. Stacy, you know, yeah. we're so excited to have you on the show tonight because we, one of the things we all admire about you is that you are so tenacious when it comes to getting things done. You're, you were with, that way with stories you work on and you've been that way through your cancer diagnoses. This one and, and the, the earlier ones. And the thing that you've always done even when you were in the middle of this, this journey, you've always been so open to having folks call you and ask you for advice. I know I've, I've sent you, I've gotten your number, I've sent you people uh, their numbers to talk to. Mm -hmm. Is that, has that helped you or should I ask you, how has that helped you with your own uh, fight? Being able to be so well, helpful there's to a others. There's a tremendous, what I call the sisterhood of, of women that I've had to turn to. And so, you know, you pay it forward all the time. So when people ask for advice, I try to give it the best I can. And I've drawn from other women through this whole experience, whether it's, it's a person who was going through chemo and they were maybe two rounds ahead of me, and they said, well, you know, I had this, here's what to expect, mm -hmm. or brace yourself, because this one's gonna be a doozy. Um, you know, it, it just helps. It helps to know that you're not alone. And, you know, one of the, uh, the reasons I had the idea for the holiday story, it wasn't my idea. Guess whose idea it was? It was our former colleague, Diana Williams. Mm -hmm. She called me, yeah. of course, Diana, to check on me. And she said, Stacy, you should do the story of, you know, what people are going through on the holidays. It's, you know, that's a no-brainer because Diana went through a lot of this with her husband. And, um, you know, sweet Diana called to check on me and then gave me an idea for a story. Of so I said, you know what? That's really smart. It's really smart yeah. to do that because it was most it was most touching when Jillian said, you know, people don't call because they don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's nice to hear from people. Jillian said, I don't know what to say. Mm. I often don't know what to say. How do you explain this? But just hearing from someone who cares about you is such a nice gesture. And it doesn't matter really yeah. if you don't know what to say. Yeah. So. Uh, Stace, it's Lee, and um, you're, you're such a beacon for people like Jillian. You have more strength and courage in your pinky than I'll probably have in a lifetime. But I, I want to ask you, for those of us who will come in contact with a, a friend, loved one, family member who has cancer, you, the, the tendency is to walk on eggshells, you know, get that tone, like, how are you? I, I want to know, like, you know, how do you feel about that? Do you, obviously, days are going to change. Some days you want to share more than others. But how, what advice would you give to friends and family members that you come in contact with? I think most cancer survivors and thrivers, I don't think we expect our friends and family to be perfect. You know, I've gotten multiple cards from people, multiple texts from people, just checking in, how are mm -hmm. you feeling today? Uh, my thoughts are with you today. You know, need anything today? Um, it, there's really no wrong thing you can say. I think the, the least judgy people are, are cancer survivors. Mm -hmm. We just have too much going on yeah. to worry about that. And I, and I think people tend to get very uptight about it and very um, nervous about saying the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I don't think they're, for me at least, it's just not, it is nice to hear from people. We, mm -hmm. You know, I was going through the holiday cards right before this, yeah. right before this live shot. Yeah. I love seeing what other people are up to. And sometimes it also distracts you to hear what other people are up to. It's a nice distraction because let's face it, things are pretty much the same around here, mm -hmm. day in and day out. Right. So. It is so wonderful seeing yeah. you, Stacey Sager. You know, you're a great reporter, you're an incredible writer. You take, you're so smart, but you're, it's nothing as compared to the human you are and what you, how strong you are going through this. And our love to your family, your two daughters, uh, we're thinking about you. And I well, I'm not going are. anywhere, and I have plenty to say. Good. <laughs> I have plenty to say about my story, and you'll all be hearing from me. And I'm going to keep working on special projects, and it passes the time a lot faster as these treatments continue. And um, you're not done with me, Good. so no, you'll be hearing aren't. from me a lot. If that's I in promise. your DNA, Stacey Sager. There's no question. Much love to you and, <laughs> and love to your family. We'll oh. see you soon. All right. Love you all. Thanks. Love you too. Okay.